Uh, just a reminder that the uh, first exam is two weeks from today. And uh, again, there's a plethora of reduced material available. On the website is uh, how to go into this every time we start. Make sure everybody's aware. Okay, so again, uh, we took our exam one here, we get to the material stuff. Uh, actually, before, two weeks from now, two weeks from now, so I'll do a review that's based on the multiple choice exam here, as well as any other questions you might have about the material. Okay, so we're pretty much on the schedule. Uh, we're going to do chapter two on. Uh, Market Revolution, and then we have one more chapter, uh, one more lecture on chapter two next time. Okay, so I'm just going to review the, the, what we call the Omega model. The Omega model, again, goes back to the time of it's based on Aristotle's views that the Earth is at the center of all motions that we see. The Earth is at the center of all planetary motions, so the Earth is at the center of the motion of the solar sphere, even, everything. Okay, so as you mentioned before, this is Latin, we have the Earth at the center, we move out to the moon. Mercury being inside. Okay, so again, a theory like this for the last 1,500 years has to have something going for it. It can't just be complete hogwash because they were actually looking at real observations and trying to make sense of the this model. So what we find is that Toby's model did provide a satisfactory explanation. There was even predictive power, you could predict planetary positions, you could even predict eclipses and things like that. Uh, it was based on a coherent model with consistent principles. We didn't have any, again, no, no delivery men reaching in and changing the positions of things in some arbitrary way. It's all uh, running like, essentially like clockwork. And so, uh, let's see. Right. Yeah. Okay, so, you need to sort of bring this into a sense of control. Sorry. That. See if this is actually going to be what I just told it. Not too long after he gets involved in this whole, whole idea. 
yeah. Again, we'll talk about what, how that timing uh, influences the publication of this work. Okay, so the main points that motivated Copernicus, the Finite-Centric model, actually did agree marginally better, a little bit better with the observation of data. It wasn't really too dramatic a difference, but it was a little bit, a little bit tighter treatment, especially with uh, most of Mars. Mars was the big problem because there's more observations of Mars than any of the outer planets. You go out beyond Mars and Jupiter, the, the actual orbital time is much, much longer. You just don't have as many observations as Jupiter moving across the sky as you Mars. So that's the Mars is uh, the perfect circle geometry was still maintained because uh, he hadn't any idea about the lips or anything like that. So we think the perfect circle, but he puts the side of the center, puts the Earth on a crystalline sphere, so he still had the idea of the crystalline sphere upon which the Earth is riding, riding on the here. And then we still have to have epicycles. But the epicycles are much smaller than they were before in Ptolemy models, because they're not necessary to actually explain the retrograde motion. They're only necessary to fine tune the orbital shape a little bit, again, because of the fact that he's not using ellipses, which is the exact answer to the problem. But he didn't know that. That wasn't known for hundreds of years later. Okay, so again, in the Copernican model, instead of using epicycles, what we actually have is the Earth overtaking Mars uh, in their orbits, and that's what actually starts the retrograde motion. So again, these are different points in time, synchronized points in time, which are based on monthly intervals. And here we see our head is pointed north here, so this is basically eastward motion on the sky. So again, if we lie on our back with our head pointed north, we open our eyes every sidereal day, we'll see the stars in the same place, but we'll see Mars moving eastward. Little by little. Except when it starts making these retrograde moves to the west. And that only occurs, the turn is realized, because the Earth is overtaking Mars in uh, Mars's orbit. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, we of course have the correct view here, the view of the uh, He basically has the orbital shapes correct when he included his epicycles. But you can see that the orbital shape, particularly Mercury there, is not a perfect circle. So, uh, you know, he was able to get that shape by having an epicycle riding on a circular deferent. Now, of course, we know that that's actually an elliptical shape, which comes after at this time in the time of uh, Newton. Okay, I actually decided to just put this in here in the middle here for a moment. Uh, it could be nothing to do with the Colmey model, but uh, I just wanted to show this anyway. This is a shot from Mars. And you all know by curiosity, I was landed about a year ago, uh, probably on Mars. There's actually two kind of interesting videos here I want to, I want to show. Uh, I'm only going to show part of the first one. It's an artist conception or some sort of... Notice this controlling his attitude with his 
pressure control thrusters. I mean, it's whipping out the ground. That's a heat shield. That fell away. Constant step. The car is slipped down. This is the most amazing thing. You see the little wheels? It's, it's on its way out of there, but it, it does. I can't believe they put this up. fell away. Now that still isn't the thing that lands. That's the thing that fell away from the reentry vehicle. Obviously, you can see it's got the retro rockets. Special, special types of problems that you're trying to 